morning. Here we are on a nice, beautiful Saturday morning. I'm wearing my glasses to start because I got a text from my son yesterday. Actually, from my uh, one of my grandchildren, I guess. It said, Grampy, you squint a lot. So I'm going to do my best to wear my glasses when I should. So instead of trying to squint to read, I'm going to try not to do that. But what a beautiful day today. It's uh, sunny, not much wind. Supposed to get up in the 50s here in uh, Maine. So I hope that you all get outside today and take advantage of uh, this great weather. Because I, my understanding is some rain turning to snow tomorrow, uh, at least where I am. Um, one to three inches. Not a lot. Not enough to plow, but enough to be a nuisance. I don't worry about snow this time of year. Let it come. Let it snow. I don't care. It comes, it comes, because I know it's going to go. I'm looking forward, though, to the even warmer days, but I think we still got a month before we get up around 60 or 70. Never know. We'll see. My uh, The picture behind me today is of a church, a little country church. It says, God bless us. That's a good sentiment for today. I uh, just thinking where tomorrow is church. It's to remind me to let you know we will still be live at 1030, but it will be uh, not in Jonah. We'll be going back to our study in 1 Samuel 18, since it's Sunday morning. It'll be a little bit longer. It'll be a church service, so to speak, though I wish we could be at church, but we're not. But anyway, um, we're, what day is this? Is 11 or 12 of the 15 days uh, that the president has asked us to be cautious before, uh, I guess, sometime Monday or Tuesday, they're going to come out with new recommendations on how we should live. Uh, this certainly has been a crazy couple of weeks. Um, as you probably know, they passed that stimulus package, which is both good and bad. I, I think it could and should stimulate uh, the economy. But it's also going to cost an awful lot for our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. So um, we'll see, see how it all plays out. Hopefully, though, it gets the economy going good and uh, things will be well very soon in our land. Certainly a trial that we're going through. I do want to mention as well, my brother Brian uh, saw a post on Facebook by him this morning and he's feeling... Yeah, a little bad. He's feeling down. He's not feeling as bad as he thought he would. Uh, he he was sick, uh, started feeling bad, I think he said Wednesday. And Friday morning, he, uh, Thursday he got tested. Friday morning he got the results that he does have the coronavirus. So he's on day four or five, not sure which, but um, he said it could be worse. Certainly could be better. So oh, we'll see, but uh, please uh, continue to pray for him. I also talked to my brother, Kevin, who was exposed, but he said he has no symptoms and he was exposed to the virus over a week ago. He's able to return back to work starting Monday, as long as he wears a mask. So uh, he's just going crazy, hanging around the house, not able to go anywhere or do anything. So it is uh, impactful, I guess, but... Um, this too shall pass. You know, this will be seasonal. Well, we are in the book of Jonah again today. We're going to get into chapter two, but before we do that, how about we pray and ask the Lord's blessing. Lord God, we're just so happy to be able to gather with you, even though, Lord, we're separated by distance personally. Lord, you are with each one of us. We welcome you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence among us. Ask you, Lord, that you would bless this time in your word and also that you would bless this day that you've given to us. Lord, you've offered it to us and we offer it right back to you. Ask you to use us in it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jonah, you know, he's uh, he's been out floating around uh, the sea and it's not been a good trip. It's been a, a very rough ride and the ship has been tossed to and fro. He's having all kinds of problems on the sea, but he knows that it's all happening because of him. As he said in chapter one, verse 12, 
you know, when they said, what do we do? He said, well, you got to pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. He knows that he uh, is the cause of the problem. But I think, what if you were Jonah? And thinking, you know, he doesn't know that God's prepared this fish for him. And here he is. He's uh, on the boat, but saying, look, you guys want everything to go well. You got to get rid of me. And I'm thinking, he's thinking, God wants to kill me. That's how I would look at it. God's brought me to the end of my life. That's where I'm at. In his mind, as he's throwing him into the sea, that's what I, I suspect he would be thinking. I'm doomed. It's all over. But as we talked about yesterday, he's still stubborn. Because at the end of chapter 1, it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord. See, I don't like that chapter verse division right there. Let's just keep reading through that, you know. Oh, yeah, put my glasses on. Now the Lord had prepared this fish and swallowed Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the fish's belly. You know, it wasn't until after three days that he prayed. Now that's some stubborn, independent, uh, stubborn man, you know. But here's the thing, you keep reading. Verse two says, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me. You know, you, you think that God is done with you. You think that you've gone too far. And yet, that's not the case. All God is waiting for is for us to turn to him. He's right there, ready, willing, able to forgive. That's his heart. He can't wait. As soon as we cry out, as it goes on uh, in verse 2, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. Isn't that amazing? That's an awesome thing. That God, how... You know, though we can fall so far, we, you know, think of Jonah. He's run. He's gone down, down, down. Now he's really down. He's in the belly of a fish, and he's down in the bottom of the sea. That's about as low as you can go. I, I don't know how far low is, but that's pretty low. And not only is it there, he's he's inside a belly. And now think of what a belly of a great fish, whether it's a whale or a fish. We don't know what kind of fish. But that's not really comfortable surroundings. I mean, I'm sure it's kind of snuggly, you know, wrapped in tight. Um, but think of what it must smell like. Think of how dark it must be. And think of how fearful a place it has to be. I have no desire to ever be in the belly of a fish. That just doesn't sound like a good time to me. Don't want to be there. But even there... You know, how far can you go to get away from God? There's no place you can go. There's no no running that we can do that we get away from him. And Jonah prayed to the Lord from the fish's belly. Now, I looked it up. I wanted to see what the scientists say. Scientists say there's no way you can survive in the belly of a fish. And I'm sure they're right. You know, but see, it's God who prepared the fish. So um, I'm sure scientifically... There isn't any way. You know what the scientist said? The only, you may find a pocket, but the pocket of, it wouldn't be oxygen. It would be methane gas in their stomach. Uh, there'd be strong acids in their stomach. Um, it's impossible to survive from a scientific natural sense. But that's okay. Because it's the Lord who prepared the fish. I don't care what the scientists say. I care what the word of God says. And, and you remember what Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish three days and three nights. Jesus believed this is a true story. And I believe it's a true story. Even though in a natural sense, uh, this would kill him. Yet, it doesn't matter what comes against us. If, if God is on our side, he will sustain us through anything in everything. You know, Psalm 91 talks about that. Though a thousand fall at my left hand, ten thousand at my right, doesn't matter. There I am, right in the midst of them, and I'll be fine. God can do that for us. So, 
He's in the belly. He's in deep, deep trouble. Um, but understand, this was not God's will, too. I want to make that point. This is not God's will for Jonah. This is Jonah's will for Jonah. God, at the beginning, wanted him to go to Nineveh. God had a, a mission for him, a plan, a, a purpose for him. And it was Jonah who chose to run from God's desire. And in his running, it is he who went down and down and down and then down into the fish as they threw him into the sea. And then in the fish, he went down into the bottom of the sea. This was not God's will for him, but it was certainly uh, God's, uh, God used it. You know, we, we talk about Romans eight twenty eight a lot, how all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And here it is, Jonah. It didn't have to go this way, but God's still going to use it for good. What an awesome God. So anyway, he cries out to the Lord in his affliction, and God answers him. And out of the belly of Sheol, he says, this is hell. That's what Sheol is, hell. And it can get pretty bad. You know, uh, it can get awful sometimes. But no matter how awful it gets, we can cry out to the Lord, and he hears our voice. You heard my voice. And verse 3 says, For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look toward your holy temple. I will again look toward your holy temple. And so, even though in his heart, in his mind, Jonah's thinking, this might not be any good to do this. God can't even see me where I am now. I'm so far away. But he, he decided, he purposes in his heart, I'm going to turn toward the Lord. And verse 5 says, the water surrounded me even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. So down there in the belly of a fish in the bottom of the sea, he's not having a good time. It's not fun at all. As he says, verse 6, I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet, you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. Is that point? I don't know how far the bottom is. Some people, it seems far down before they will turn. But as soon as anyone will turn, if they will turn, there is God standing right there. Way there, where Jonah is, as deep as you can go. You brought up my life from the pit. Oh, Lord, my God. What an awesome, awesome statement. And so verse 7 says, When my soul fainted with, within me, I remembered the Lord. And see, when you come to the end of whatever the end is, when you've gone as far as you can go in your own strength, when you fought until you're done fighting, and you turn, you remember the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. God hears the prayer. And then Jonah, this, this idea, you know, this is what comes to his mind. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. You know, idols are nothing. Mercy is the thing. But I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving, I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. There was no way out, no hope. <laughs> Nothing is going well. And yet, salvation is of the Lord. And then, I, don't you love verse 10? So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto the dry land. I don't know what that uh, probably felt like or looked like. I'm thinking projectile vomit launched him right out of the fish's mouth, landed him on the uh, shore, near the shore of the sea, uh, onto dry land, it says. So out he comes, you know, launched. But I suspect he didn't look too pretty. And, you know, that's the way it is with sin. We don't look so good when sin gets all over us. I'm sure he didn't smell too pretty either. I, I checked that out. Uh, you know, there are scientists who have uh, looked at fish puke, and I, I guess it's kind of whitish and waxy, and uh, the scientist I read, his description of what it smelled like, he said it's a, a mixture of squid and farm manure. Now, 
I don't know as I've smelled a squid, but I certainly have smelled farm manure. And you, I'm, I'm sure you add squid to it, it isn't going to improve it. it. It's not something you can go to, uh, you know, the, the perfumer and say, could you make me some of this? And you want to put some of that on you. That's just not going to be good at all. And, and not only that, you know, I, I don't know what his hair looked like. You know, was it all nice and neatly combed? I don't think so. Did he even have hair? You know, did the acids in the stomach of the fish, you know, take some of the hair off his head? And what were his clothes? Were they any good? Could he wear them at all? Or, or were, those, uh, were those gone? Or were they torn and tattered? I mean, can't be good for your clothing to be in a fish belly for three days either. But regardless, he comes out. And that sense of no longer captive, that sense of being set free from the bondage where he was in the belly of the fish, you know, there must have been such an elation in him regardless, you know, and the first thing he wants to do, I'm sure, he's right near there on the beach. It's time to get back in the water, and get some of this sin off me, some of this remnant of what has happened to me. And so he does. And then it's, you know, you think, now what? Now what's going to happen? And, you know, the cool thing, and just that uh, first two verses of chapter 3, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. See, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Even though Jonah had run away, and done all these things. It isn't like God said, well, gee, I can't use you anymore. No, God said, look, hey, now that you're back where I want you to be, let's do a redo. What an awesome God. God's mercy, God's grace is so wonderful. I hope that today as you uh, think about who God is and how much he loves you, and how much he spared you from, and how much he wants to do for you in your life, that you will be encouraged by what Jonah has gone through. Don't go as far as he has gone. Don't be like Jonah. If you hear the voice of the Lord telling you to do something, just obey. Oh, it's such a wonderful thing to do, just to do the will of the Lord. So let's pray and uh, ask the Lord to bless our day. And I just pray he's going to use you in a mighty way today. Lord God, we thank you so much for the encouragement that comes through someone like Jonah. Lord, I don't want to follow him. I don't want to be like him. Yet so many times I have been like him. So many times I have gone my own way instead of your way. Lord, help me today just to follow you. Help me today to do what you desire, not what I desire. Because what you desire for me is blessing, is good. And so, Lord, I thank you for that. Bless our day, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. The Lord's day tomorrow. Uh, and as I said, we will be in 1 Samuel 18. I pray the Lord blesses you greatly today. Until we see each other again, God bless you.